if Yugi used all seven of the Millennium items. If you didn't know, the MacGuffins of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series are the Millennium items. Seven mystical items that were created through a very, very shady thing, a mass murder. I did a whole video discussing this. You can check that out if you want to learn about the backstory of it. But the point I'm trying to make is that these seven items grant their wielders some very special abilities. They have like a generic power set everybody gets. But what we care about today is that each one of these items grants one unique ability exclusive to that Millennium item. For example, we know that the main character, Yugi, had the Millennium Puzzle. Its unique ability heightened the chance of success in games. More specifically though, this ability is amplified by how dire the situation is, how important the game is, and how powerful the wielder is. Basically, if you went and watched through the whole series again, anytime there's a heart of the cards moment or a destiny draw, if you will, back to the wall, I have to get this card, that could be a little bit of the Millennium Puzzle, just helping out our main protagonist here. And if you want the apex pinnacle of this ability, at the very end of the series where Yami Yugi is like the best duelist ever and he knows it, he has mastered the ability so much he can just draw whatever he wants. He doesn't even need to look at cards anymore. He's just like this, I need this, I need this. So that's how busted the Millennium Puzzle gets at the end of the series. Now, a good chunk through the anime, Yugi learns that he needs to collect all seven of the Millennium items and learn his true name in order to go to the afterlife. This is the ultimate goal for Yami Yugi, probably like two thirds of the way through the series something along them lines. From this point onwards, Yugi starts collecting the Millennium items. He never uses them. He just puts them in his little duffel bag thing you see him have, and he just holds on to them until the end of the series. But that is what begs the question for today. What if Yugi had started adding these Millennium items to his own arsenal? How powerful would he have been? And the bigger question, could he have done this? Let's discuss it, shall we? So first things first, to achieve this, we're gonna have to change the premise of the Yu-Gi-Oh! series. Most shonen anime have one specific central plot point that the whole anime works towards. This is the goal of the main character. Luffy, he wants to find One Piece. He wants to become King of the Pirates. Naruto, he wants to become Hokage. Goku, Goku's is a bit more vague. He just wants to become the most powerful person in the world and fight powerful opponents, basically. He must be the best fighter in the world. If I ask all of you, what was the central plot point from episode one all the way to the ending? There isn't really one in Yu-Gi-Oh. Now, obviously later on it becomes to go to the afterlife. That's the final goal. At the start, if we had to pick one, I guess it's little Yugi. He wants to make friends and gain more confidence, which is an absolute fine aspiration to have, but it's not really a tangible thing really, is it? So it's not really a, a central plot point we can focus on. So what if we change that? What if as soon as this series started, Yami Yugi had one thing he knew, which was that he needs to collect seven Millennium items in order to restore what is lost, which would be his name kind of thing or something like that. So here we go. We are in episode one of this new timeline in the Yu-Gi-Oh! series, and we have already collected one Millennium item. We have the Millennium Puzzle and its abilities. Awesome. When do we get the next one? Well, fast forward to the end of Duelist Kingdom and Yugi has just defeated Pegasus who wielded the Millennium Eye. The Millennium Eye's ability is that it grants the wielder the ability to see into the minds of others. Outside of duels, this allows you to know what anyone is thinking at any time. In duels, it lets you know what your opponent's strategies are when they're thinking about them. And it also lets you see what cards are in their hand because you see them in your mind's eye. The Millennium Eye is by far the most overpowered Millennium item in terms of dueling ability. This thing is insane. I'm gonna admit it right now. Let's just say as the stakes for this shadow game, Yugi forcibly takes the Millennium Eye from Pegasus. Now in the manga, Pegasus does die. But that might be because Bakura took it off him and took it like forcefully. I assume Pegasus could take it out nicely maybe because he seems to be a man of honor at the very least. Pegasus, he gave everybody back everything that he promised. So I don't see why if he promised it in the shadow game, he wouldn't just give Yugi the Millennium Eye. Now with this Millennium Eye, it's a problem already. I personally can't see Yami Yugi forcing Yugi to sacrifice one of his eyeballs to have the Millennium Eye. Yes, you lose your eye in order to get the Millennium Eye. 
I don't think he'd do that. From a storytelling point of view, the Millennium Eye is the most powerful. So really, this should be like end game, end of series kind of challenge. Yugi probably should have lost the Pegasus and then at the end of the series have a rematch and he's finally able to overcome the Millennium Eye kind of thing. If we have to get it at the start, I guess it would make sense for Yugi just to hold on to the Millennium Eye for a while. And then after some point in the series, maybe Yami Yugi when he goes away or something, Little Yugi is there, he's by himself, his back's against the wall, he's about to lose, he's about to lose the Millennium Puzzle, for example, and he finally gives in, he's like, I'm going to use the Millennium Eye now, sacrifices his eye, gains this new power, and then when he gets the puzzle back, he now has the Millennium Puzzle Luck Boost, and the ability to see into the opponent's mind, which makes Yugi instantly broken. From, like, he doesn't need any more Millennium Items from this point onwards, he's absolutely busted. That's simple as that. Like, imagine having the Millennium Puzzle and the Millennium Eye together. Now, it's unclear whether people can use other Millennium items, by the way, because the item chooses the, the user. It's like a Harry Potter one situation. The one chooses the wizard. I think the Millennium items choose their wielders. But if the Millennium Eye chose Pegasus, I don't see why it wouldn't choose Yami Yugi. Keep in mind that I go over this more in this video right here. The Millennium items fall into three categories. There's good Millennium items. There's bad or dark millennium items and there's one that is both the eye the ring and the rod are evil the key the necklace and the scales are good and the millennium puzzle is a mix of the two i mean let's be honest yami yugi has a bit of darkness in him for sure so i don't see why he wouldn't be able to wield this item but yeah basically whenever little yugi accepts this item and uses it on his body he will be absolutely broken and by the way can i just say this as well it would be really good thematically and is good foreshadowing. Yugi puts the Millennium Eye in. He loses his, no, it's his right eye, let's say. Later on, during the Waking the Dragons arc, Tamias, the Eye of Tamias, what is the thing that he is missing? His eye. Look at that for foreshadowing. It could work. Kind of cool. So following the story, what's the next Millennium Item? Well, I'm going to say, despite Yugi beating Bakura during Duelist Kingdom and then later during the Battle City Tournament, I don't think that Yugi would get the ring yet since Bakura, well, he's a slippery one. And the ring is like uber evil, like the ultimate evil. It's got Zork inside of it. For story purposes, this will work as well as the ring is pretty OP in terms of searching for other Millennium items because if you don't know, the Millennium Ring has the ability to point to whatever you so desire. So... Where's my phone? Whoop. Oh, look at that. That's amazing. That's incredible. Where is the Millennium Necklace? Beep, 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 beep. Okay, I'll just go find that. Makes life a bit too easy for our protagonist. So maybe we hold off on that. And Bakura's kind of a late game bad guy, so it's fine. And I'll say this now, it doesn't seem as if all Millennium items can be used in duels for some sort of advantageous thing. I kind of wish they were, but I know Bakura never did it. But let's just say why not, that the Millennium Ring has the ability in a duel to point to things that you ask it. So like your opponent has got like a bunch of set cards on the field. You could be like, which one of those cards is a trap card? And it could point to the one that's a trap. Or if you knew your opponent had Mirror Force, which is Mirror Force in your opponent's hand or something, beep, 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 beep. that'd be kind of cool. Like you could do things like that. You It'd probably be the weakest of the Millennium Items in terms of in duel ability, because that's not that great. Like, okay, it's, I know it's there at least, but it's kind of interesting. Let's just say that has that ability. Why not? Now, our next Millennium Item is actually a double whammy. The Battle City Finals have just come to an end. We've just curb stomped Marek since we are just so overpowered at the moment, and we have learnt the secrets of the Pharaoh. Marek and Ashizu both gift us their Millennium Items. We now have the Millennium Rod and the Millennium Necklace. My God, we've got powerful now. With the Necklace, Yugi can see into the future. And with the Rod, Yugi can create his own Mind Puppets. Now, I'll be honest, I can't see Yugi using Mind Puppets throughout this entire series. The ability to create slaves, mm, I don't think he'd do that. I honestly think the Millennium Rod would probably be the least used Millennium item. I don't think he'd use it. Maybe he could use the knife to like cut open some letters or something. Probably get that involved, but he's not going to use it. The Millennium Necklace, sure, we can look into the future. Am I going to win this duel? I am. All right, cool. It's nice to know. I was probably going to win it anyway, but still. I mean, it depends how seeing the future works as well, but like, oh, if I go through 
that door, there's a guy behind there that's going to try and challenge me to a duel. Screw that, I'm going to go the other way. So we've just got those two items. Guess what? We get another double whammy. We're at the end of the series. Shardy gifts us the Millennium Key and the Millennium Scale. I think at this point as well is probably where we get Bakura's Millennium Ring, but we can use all of the other Millennium items together to defeat him as well. If you don't know, the key lets you go into a person's soul and see their like soul room and you can faff with it. You can mess with it and you can change a person fundamentally at their core and make them kind of like a different person. So you can imagine doing that at duel. My opponent's like hyper aggressive, doing all these aggressive attacks. I don't know, I'm gonna go into their soul room and make them timid. So they're like, oh, I won't attack, I'm so scared. It could be a mirror force and stuff. And just clap them like that, it's insane. The Millennium Scale is a glorified uh, lie detector. I guess with the scale, you could ask someone like, do you have mirror force face down on the field? No, he's lying. In fact, let's just say now we have all the Millennium items. We go against Zork in the final ever duel. This is how broken we would be. Zork draws, he does stuff. Millennium scale, lie detector. Do you have this card face down? Do you have Mirror Force face down? No. That says you do. Mirror Force is face down. Millennium puzzle. My goodness, I hope I draw Mystical Space Typhoon as my top deck. This is such a dire situation. Oh my god. Mystical Space Typhoon. Millennium Eye. Does my opponent have anything else in their hand that would ruin my day? No, nothing. Hog. Millennium Necklace. Let me look into the future. When I activate Mystical Space Typhoon and destroy that Mirror Force, is anything bad going to happen? No, we're fine. Millennium Rod. I have dirt under my nails. I'm going to clean that out. And finally, Millennium Ring. I've actually forgotten which one was Mirror Force. Which one was Mirror Force again? Beep, 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 beep. Oh, it's that one right there. <laughs> the moral of the story is, if Yugi had absorbed all of the Millennium items throughout the series, there would be no series. Yugi would be way too overpowered and way too strong. You'd have to nerf him. You'd have to have like some Millennium items taken off him or he becomes too over-reliant on him or something like that. But it's an interesting thing to think about how overpowered someone would become. If they could use multiple items, it's not even a guarantee if they could. But if you can show me anywhere why this couldn't have happened throughout the series, I would love to see it. But yes, thank you so much for watching this video, guys. I hope you enjoyed this fun little chat. Check out this video right here. I'm sure you want to. But if you don't like that one, watch that one. But other than that, thank you all for watching. Catch you later.